Hey there, Terrestrial fans. Uh, this past week, the drama seemed to be the currency of choice. The US Securities and Exchange Commission took a major swing in Binance, effectively cutting off its access to the USD. In my book, it's the beginning of the end of Binance. Even though I want to believe that it will be able to make do with uh, global retail customers and local banking partners, but let's face it, uh, Binance model is so heavily dollar dependent that cutting USD out of the equation would amount to a declaration of all-out war. Uh, but we'll talk about this whole thing more later in the video. Uh, to make sure that the industry got the message, the SEC went after Coinbase too, although in this case it's different. The exchange is being accused of uh, non-registering as a broker-dealer, a securities trader, and clearinghouse. Uh, Coinbase fired back, you know, ready to brawl, reminding the SEC that they had the audacity to let the exchange go public not too long ago. A line of defense that's complete BS in my view, but again, let's not reveal the jaws in the first frame of the movie. We'll talk about Coinbase more later on in some detail. Right now we're looking at Bitcoin and ETH tumbling 5% in just 24 hours and BNB getting smacked with a 9% drop. Uh, Bitcoin is at its lowest since its peak of uh, 30,000 back in mid-April and Binance depositors are giving uh, until the 15th of June to get their USD off the exchange. Hopefully by the time this video is up you've already withdrawn yours. Uh, all right so let's dig deep. <laughs> Where to begin? Uh, I'm going to assume that since you're watching this video, you're already familiar with the whole you know, Mexican standoff between the SEC, Coinbase, and Binance. Uh, for those who aren't, uh, here's the skinny, and I do mean skinny because this thing is so past its inception stage that I honestly have no idea how to serve it up to the uh, uninitiated. So uh, The Wall Street Journal's uh, Caitlin Ostrov gives us a perfect high-level summary of what's going on, so if you don't mind, I will let her speak for a while. The Securities and Exchange Commission filed separate civil lawsuits against two major exchanges, Binance and Coinbase. Binance is an international crypto exchange that was founded in 2017. The Securities and Exchange Commission sued Binance saying that it was operating an illegal securities exchange in the U.S. And in doing so, it sued not just Binance's U.S. entity and its global entity, but also Chengping Zhao, who is the founder of Binance. In its lawsuit, the SEC said that Binance was offering tokens that were actually securities and that those were not registered as such. And because of that, Binance was basically operating a sort of black market for tokens that they were not supposed to be allowed to let users trade. The SEC also really dug into a lot of Binance's operations. Two of the firms that the SEC zeroed in on in the Binance complaint were called Merit Peak and Sigma Chain. These are two market makers that were owned and operated by Zhao, Binance's founder and CEO. And the SEC says that Sigma Chain, one of these so-called market-making firms which buys and sells cryptocurrencies, was doing that on Binance US but trading a lot of the same funds. And so basically making it look like there was a bunch more trading than there actually was. They also say that there was the risk of funds being commingled on Binance US through the Merit Peak entity. And so they're saying that because of those two entities, users weren't fully aware of what was happening with their funds and what was potentially happening in the background. Binance has said that it intends to defend the platform vigorously. It has vehemently denied that there was ever any risk to customer funds that it commingled assets. Not even a day later, there was a separate lawsuit that the SEC handed down against Coinbase, the largest US exchange. In their lawsuit against Coinbase, the SEC is saying that it also traded assets that should have been registered as securities. And because of that, Coinbase was operating an illegal securities exchange as well. In response to the charges, Coinbase has called for there to be more specific legislation regarding cryptocurrencies in Washington, D.C., and has said that it's going to continue to engage with legislators to actually get that legislation through Congress. So for Binance, the SEC is seeking for Zhao and his companies to not be able to do business in the U.S. It seems more likely that this litigation is going to drag out for a while. Unlike the Department of Justice, which can issue criminal charges, the SEC can really only do civil charges. At most, you could be looking at either a settlement or if a judge rules in the SEC's favor, a monetary fine. Crypto has 
grown exponentially from when it was created and worth basically nothing in 2009, 2010, to where we are now, where it's a $1 trillion industry. The recent escalation in enforcement from the agency has certainly caught people's attention, and it does seem like they're starting to really go after not just small companies and projects as they have in the past, but really the biggest companies in the ecosystem. Uh, there you have it. Uh, now you're up to speed and um, ready to follow the uh, situation so dystopian for crypto and simultaneously so exciting to me personally, uh, for it invokes the former reporter and me, uh, former journalist, uh, that I'm almost giddy. Uh, anyway, uh, there's plenty of great scholarship on the subject already. Uh, it only took days for some of the best minds in the space to put ink to the paper and produce exceptional content. Read Molly White's newsletter. It's it just came out and it's really a doozy. All right, so last Monday, the SEC sued Binance, filing a 136-page complaint in the District of Columbia, outlining 13 charges, alleging basically fraud of all colors, shapes, and sizes, uh, stating the company operated a legal trading platform in the U.S. and misused customers' funds and more. Uh, on Tuesday, in uh, one-two punch, uh, it clocked Coinbase for different transgressions. The SEC alleges that Coinbase violated rules that required it to uh, register as an exchange and uh, be overseen by the federal agency. Uh, this action is civil in nature, so no criminal indictments yet, but both are part of the same effort to rein in crypto. So it's safe to say that a lot of lawyers are going to get stinking rich on this one because both firms are committed to vigorous defense. Notably, Binance just made a killer addition to its legal team, hiring George Canellis, former chief of the major crimes unit in the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York and former head of the uh, SEC's New York office and former SEC Enforcement Division co-director, which in the former SEC official John Stark's words means that Binance is clearly preparing for criminal prosecution and continuing uh, to hire the best defense attorney in the world. Uh, but then he adds that there's serious doubt in his mind that even Iron Man, Captain America, and the Hulk could get Binance out of their current perilous legal quagmire. Uh, this could actually be a good time to recall the CFTC complaint filed on March 27th, alleging that Binance failed to register with the CFTC, yet it allowed U.S. customers to trade derivatives on its platform. It instructed those customers to use VPNs to hide their locations and directed VIP customers, who are usually institutional traders, uh, to open accounts using shell companies. Uh, it's a fascinating read, actually. I mean, I'm talking about the complaint, um, and I'm sure there's a sealed DOJ indictment there somewhere waiting in the wings for its time. Uh, Binance never responded to the uh, CFTC complaint officially, and they have till July 27th to show their colors. We'll see how this plays out in conjunction with the fresh lawsuit. Uh, meanwhile, Brian, the real boy Armstrong, just finished doing the media circuit going on CNBC, the Wall Street Journal TV, Bloomberg TV, and God knows what else TV, basically, doing what he does best, uh, playing Boy Scout, lamenting the lack of back and forth with the SEC, and my personal favorite, uh, playing the IPO card. As in, hey, the SEC saw what we do when we filed our S1 to go public. Uh, now, how come they're up in arms? So, you know, Twitter gently reminded Mr. Armstrong that a firm's S1 has nothing to do with the actual business practices that ensue and the products that, it puts, that the firm puts on the market. Um, S1 basically is the sum of all necessary disclosures a business must make to conduct an IPO. Um, think pharmaceutical. You know, when they want to go public, the SEC accepts their S1s, but doesn't check if the medicine works. Uh, they have FDA for that. Uh, but anyway, I'm sure the Coinbase suit will get a multi multi-million settlement and the base, I'll call it the base. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be calling Coinbase the base from now on, so trademark. <laughs> will in the end, so the base will in the end obtain all necessary licenses for its earned product or lose relevance to all kinds of DEXs that don't really mind, at least for a while, you know, murky legalities and shifty local banking partners. Uh, here's another interesting response to the SEC onslaught. Uh, the House Republicans, in their infinite wisdom, have come up with a novel solution to the uh, to their ongoing feud with Gary Gensler. And by novel, I mean the uh, they've decided to simply try to fire him. Uh, Republicans Warren, De uh, Warren Davidson and Tom Emmer have filed new legislation that, if by some miracle it passes, uh, would shake up the SEC structure and uh, just casually give G Gensler an old heave-ho. Uh, Emmer says the SEC's Stabilization Act will make common sense changes to ensure the SEC's priorities align with the investors they're supposed to protect, not the reckless whims of its chair. 
Uh, interestingly, uh, the proposed legislation would add a sixth commissioner to the SEC, and no single polit uh, no single political party could hold more than three seats at any given at any given time. Uh, again, to be real, Davidson and Emmer's bill has about as much chance of passing as I do of becoming the next billion Bitcoin billionaire. But it does give us a pretty good idea of the temperature in the national legislature that, let's face it, is just about as functional as a chocolate teapot. Anyway, let's talk about the fallout. Um, well, it began, as you can imagine, immediately after the announcement of the first lawsuit. Uh, Robinhood market said on Friday it is removing three cryptocurrency tokens from its platform. Uh, customers will not be able to trade Solana, Cardano, or Polygon using Robinhood effective June 27th. The online brokerage said uh, Binance US delisted around 100 trading pairs and halted its over-the-counter trading portal. Uh, however, community backlash caused a partial reversal with Binance US only delisting 10 pairs. Since the lawsuit, the exchange has seen a massive premium on Bitcoin, significant withdrawal of funds, and a sharp increase in trade slippage. Uh, indicating declining liquidity. The exchange has seen a net outflow of $120 million since the troubles began. Adding to the woes, Binance US announced it would be ending USD payment support following difficulties in finding banking partners. Uh, and in a notable twist of fate, Crypto.com is shuttering its uh, institutional service in the US due to a uh, diminished demand from American institutions. Uh, the move effective June 21st will not affect its retail app, but it's obvious that the company has faced challenges in the US market, exacerbated by the SEC, uh, SEC scrutiny of unregistered digital assets. While regulatory concerns exist, uh, the primary cause for Crypto.com's closure appears to be a lack of viable business model for uh, US traders unwilling to bypass regulations as Binance did. But as nature does abhor vacuum, in an attempt to stay relevant, the UK government has announced its uh, grant plan to transform the country, already a cesspool of financial engineering, into a global hub for uh, crypto asset technology. Uh, the Brits are getting ready to uh, recognize stable coins as a valid form of payment. Uh, the measures include a financial market infrastructure sandbox for firms to play around in, uh, a crypto sprint, the so-called crypto sprint led by the uh, FCA, and even a collaboration with the Royal Mint on an NFT because nothing says forward thinking like jumping on a digital doodle bandwagon. You know, but it's all fun and games until Andreessen Horowitz puts its foot down, uh, which they did. The firm identifies the United Kingdom as a potential future hub for the cryptocurrency industry and has announced the uh, opening of its first international office in London, which will also host its upcoming crypto accelerator program. Obviously, Andreessen Horowitz's expansion plans have been influenced by the regulatory uncertainties surrounding crypto in the United States and uh, positive statements from UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Uh, Chris Dixon, founder and general partner of, uh, of uh, A16Z Crypto, believes regulatory clarity in the UK could lead to uh, more US companies relocated and uh, new ventures emerging in the country. The firm has engaged with various stakeholders in the UK to discuss the industry's future. Uh, the expansion signifies a departure for a company that previously insisted on having all its partners operate solely within Silicon Valley. So what else is there? I don't know, uh, this week's been quite a journey, but we've barely scratched the surface here of the uh, unfolding drama. The intricate power play between SEC, Binance, and Coinbase, the tumultuous market trends, and the shifting sands of the global regulatory landscape. There's just so much more to delve into. However, I hope this video gives you a, a semblance of understanding of the current situation. Uh, you know, the cri crypto landscape is teetering on the brink of drastic change, and it's my great pleasure to continue to keep you abreast of all these changes. Remember, it's not about predicting the future. It's about being prepared for it, and uh, I'll see what I can do to help. Peace.